Side chaining is one of those essential things that every audio editor should know how to do. And thanks to some updates in DaVinci Resolve 19, side chaining is not only super easy, but also a lot more flexible than it used to be. So today we're going to take a look at what side chaining is, how to do it in DaVinci Resolve, and why one of the most popular use cases for side chaining is actually kind of wrong. Hi, my name's Jay, I'm a mixing and mastering engineer, and if you haven't figured it out by the title and the intro to this video, we're talking about side chaining today. Now, what is side chaining? Well, let's say we have two audio tracks. For simplicity's sake, we'll call them track A and track B. Now, let's say we want to put a plugin on track B. It can be any kind of plugin we want. It can be a compressor, a dynamic EQ, a de-esser, whatever. The main point is we only want that plugin doing its thing when there's audio present on track A. And that's what side chaining does. It sends this signal from track A to the plugin on track B so that when audio is present on track A, the plugin on track B does what it's supposed to do. And then when the audio on track A goes away, the plugin stops doing what it's designed to do. If that sounds confusing, I promise it's going to get super, super easy really, really soon. I promise, just stick with me. Now, one of the most popular use cases for side chaining, at least in the video world, is ducking music against the dialogue. So when people are speaking in a video, the backing track goes down, and when they stop talking, the backing track goes up. And it is effective. It does exactly that. But I don't like it. I don't like doing it. I don't think anybody should do it. There are better ways to control your backing track. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. But first, let's dive into DaVinci Resolve. I've got a little bit of a fake movie trailer that I threw together. We're in the Fairlight page right now. I've got some dialogue clips here on audio one. That's all these yellow clips. Below that, we've got some sound effects. Below that, we've got some Foley. And below that, we've got some music. Now, even though I think it's wrong, even though I don't agree with this method because it is so popular, we are going to do exactly what I said you shouldn't do. We are going to duck the music against the dialogue using side chaining. Before we do that, let me play you this timeline so you know exactly what we're trying to fix. Once upon a time, the world fell apart. Nobody really knows how it happened or how to fix it. Beware the Nightmare Queen. Okay, you heard that, right? The music was completely swallowing up the dialogue. You couldn't hear some of those clips almost at all. Like, you could hear somebody talking, but you couldn't make out what they were saying. So we're going to use side chaining to fix that. It's going to automatically duck the music whenever the narrator is talking. But first, if so far this video has been helpful in any way at all, I would really appreciate it if you just took a second to hit that like button because it helps the video spread to more people. It would be greatly appreciated. All right, in order to duck our music against the dialogue, we're going to need a compressor. So we're going to open up the compressor for our music track, which is audio four. So we got audio four, come down to our dynamics panel, double click to open that up and you'll see our compressor right here in the middle. We can go ahead and turn that on. And right here in the bottom right hand corner of our compressor, we see our little side chain options. We've got on, we've got listen, and we've got a source drop down box. The cool thing about DaVinci Resolve 19 is this side chain option used to only be available in Dynamics. It's now available for basically everything, including third party plugins. So I could actually 
get a dynamic EQ from, let's say, Waves. They're linked below in the description, by the way. You should really check them out. They got some amazing audio plugins. And then I could use side chaining to automatically drop the 1K Hertz frequency whenever there's talking. I could just drop that 1K Hertz frequency on the music track against the dialogue, and I could carve out some more space for my dialogue. In fact, that's why I use side chaining for the most part in video is exactly that. I don't use this compressor method much. All right, the first thing that we need to do for this side chaining is we need to choose our source. So we'll hit this source drop down box and we're going to choose DX. This is what is going to be sending the signal to our compressor. Next, we're going to turn side chaining on and you can turn on listen if you want. All listen is going to do is it's going to mute the music track or whatever track you have the compressor on and it's just going to listen to your source track. We don't really need to do that here, so we are going to start tweaking some settings. Now, if we are ducking music, we don't want it to be too harsh. So I actually like cranking my attack all the way up. I'm going to do the same thing with release because I like the time that it takes to get back to the original volume to be as long as possible. And then hold is how long we're going to keep the audio compressed before it starts to release. So we're going to bring that up usually about three quarters of the way. You can play around with this in your own videos to figure out how you like it. But hold needs to be up there as high as you can Otherwise, when there's little gaps in your speaking, the music is going to jump up. And we don't want that. We want it to stay down even if there's pauses in the speaking. So we're going to bring our hold up. And the other two settings we need to worry about here are threshold and ratio. Ratio is going to kind of determine how much your compressor compresses the music and threshold is going to determine how loud the signal needs to be in order for that compressor to kick in. I like to keep my ratio anywhere between two and four to one. We'll go ahead and split the difference here and move it up to three. And threshold's all going to depend on the loudness of the dialogue. So we'll play around with that as we're listening. Go ahead and come back to the beginning of the timeline and we will play and see what we've got going on. Once upon a time, the world fell apart. Nobody really knows how it happened or how to fix it. There's only one rule. Beware the Nightmare Queen. There you go. And from there, you can play around with attack and hold and release to get the exact settings that you want and the optimal ducking times and all of that stuff. Now, here is why I don't want you to do what I just taught you to do. While side chaining is amazing and it is great for a lot of things, it's not as good as you think for ducking against dialogue. It's not good for ducking music against dialogue. And there are a couple reasons why. One, because we're not just lowering the volume. We are compressing our music, which means it's going to sound squashed. It does sound off. I don't like it. I can hear the difference. Maybe you can't, but it's not just lowering the volume. It is squashing that dynamic range. It's making the music sound weird, and I don't like it. Reason number two is is you are sacrificing a lot of control. For example, these first three dialogue clips were absolutely fine because I didn't have anything big going on. So I had no problem with how the compressor was operating for these first three clips. But the last dialogue clip, it took way 
too long for it to release. And I missed that first impact when the music got loud. I just hit my watch on my desk. So you're sacrificing a lot of control. If you want the ducking to be different for a different clip, you're going to have to put that one single dialogue clip on a different track, do side chaining for that track as well. And it's it just, it doesn't work very well. If you want to duck your music against the dialogue, DaVinci Resolve 19 actually has, if we select our music track and we come up into our inspector, that's what this does. Ducker. You turn that on and you can select your source and you can select your duck level, but even that is going to have its issues. It's going to have the same problem as side chaining the compressor to do it. It's going to sacrifice control over the individual clips. If you really, 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 really want full control over your ducking of the music, then what I suggest is either keyframing your audio volume or using automation. And speaking of automation, 